Hi. In today's training session, I am going to go through the Biomedics Microscope System. I will show you some of the basic parts and pieces of the microscope, how things fit together, and review some technical points. When you are at one of our microscope training workshops, it will be your responsibility to take the time during the lab portion of the program to make sure you understand everything you can about this tool so you get the most out of it. Biomedics is an Olympus OEM, and we take one of the small footprint baseline Olympus laboratory microscopes, which is lightweight and easily moved about, and we remove the low power light bulb and add a flexible glass fiber optic cable and external 150 watt quartz halogen light source. This means that a lightweight laboratory microscope that already possesses world class Olympus optics becomes a heavyweight where performance is concerned. With the biomedics modifications in place, there is now plenty of light to push through a range of optics giving stellar high-level performance. From dark field imaging, which matches microscopes at two to three times the price, to having enough light to push through additional head components and optical zoom systems, these units offer tremendous clinical and presentation flexibility. Let's look at these systems in more depth. Now when you first get your microscope, it will be important to initially take everything out of the boxes and lay them out on a table. From there, you can start to assemble the components. Now, at this very early point of our review, I feel I should make one important point. When you are home alone or at your clinic and everything is spread out on your table, should all else fail, you can always, yep, read the instructions. Here's the base frame of the microscope. You will note that there is a fiber optic cable extending out from the back of the unit. This is the cable which will need to be connected to the 150 watt quartz halogen light source. It is with this unit and the power switch where you control the microscope light intensity. When the 150 watt lamp burns out, which it periodically will do, you replace the lamp by loosening the screw located towards the front and on top of the unit and the front door drops down. The lamp is seated and held in place by a retaining wire and the lamp is easily lifted out with the lamp extracting arm. The lamp is held in the socket through pressure against the lamp pins when it is pressed in place. With the light source ready to go, you can plug the fiber optic cable into the porthole on the front panel and the set screw can be lightly tightened holding it in place. The other end of the cable sets below the field iris assembly inside the base of the microscope itself. And this is where the light comes out. This is the field of light you see when you look into the microscope, and this field of light has an iris adjustment associated with it. Hence, this is called the field iris assembly. Your microscope specimen, or microscope slide, will sit on the microscope stage. You will note on the stage there is a slide holder assembly. When it comes time to put a slide in place, you would simply open the slide holder, put your slide in place, and let the arm close down on the slide. The slide is moved on the XY axis by the stage control arm on the right side of the unit. The larger diameter section of the arm moves the slide front to back and the smaller diameter section of the arm moves the slide left and right. You will note that the stage raises and lowers by rotating the focus control knobs which are situated on either side of the microscope. Your specimen is focused by the raising and lowering of the stage. The outside of the focus knob is the coarse focus and rotating it moves the stage up and down and the inner part of the focus knob is the fine focus and rotating it moves the stage ever so slightly. There are two things to note about the focus assembly and this is two specific adjustments that are available on the left and right focus knobs. First, let's look at the left focus knob. You will note a lever which can move. This is the stage lock. Let's say you have a glass slide in place and have focused on your specimen. When you push the stage lock down, it will now lock your stage at the focus point. You will not be able to raise the stage past this point. This is helpful to immediately return to a focus point when you are changing slides. It also helps prevent you from moving the stage and your specimen up into the objective where you could crunch your specimen or break your slide if you move the stage too aggressively. To further prevent this from happening, the high-powered microscope objectives which get closest to your slide are spring-loaded and they will retract a bit in the event you raise your slide too far 
and it hits the objective. Moving now to the right focus knob, you will note an inner sleeve. This is the tension adjustment. It is a bit tough to grab a hold of, but you would do this by getting your thumb and fingers onto the sleeve and rotating it counterclockwise. This loosens the focus tension. If you were to loosen it too much, the stage would drop down all by itself. Over time, if the tension loosens, you may find the picture goes slowly out of focus, even when you are not touching the controls. This would likely mean your tension sleeve needs to be tightened just a bit. Let's talk about getting the light properly adjusted under the slide. You will note that the light is coming up out of the field iris assembly, but you will need to condense this light and shoot it through your specimen slide. You will do this with a condenser. To illustrate this, let's review three types of condensers. First, let's take a look at a simple bright field condenser. This is simply a lens assembly that condenses and focuses the light under the specimen that is sitting on the stage. This is called an Abbey bright field condenser, named after Ernst Abbey, who long ago developed the lens structure. When an Abbey bright field condenser is in place under the slide, you would be looking at your specimen against a bright field of light coming right through the lens assembly, hence the name bright field. On this particular condenser, there is an iris assembly, and when it is closed down, the depth of field will increase when you are viewing your specimen. You will note that all condensers will need to fit under the microscope stage, and under the stage will be a condenser holder assembly. On some microscope systems, the condenser will fit on top of the condenser holder assembly, and on some microscopes, the condenser will come up from underneath. On a biomedic system, the condenser comes up from underneath the holder to fit in place. To place the condenser in its holder properly, you will need to raise the stage platform and locate the condenser holder assembly knob that will raise and lower the condenser holder. On this microscope, it is just under the stage to the back and on the left hand side. Upon lowering it down, you will note that there is a set screw on the left side of the assembly. It is important that before you attempt to push your condenser up into its holder, the set screw should be loosened lightly and not block the condenser from properly being put up into place. Easing the condenser in place under the holder, center it under the hole and rotate this assembly down while you fit the condenser up into place. When the condenser is in place, it should be seated all the way up into its holder and then the set screw can be finger tightened to hold it in place. Here is an image of live blood. You can see that the red blood cells are very faint and other elements in the blood plasma like chylomicrons or fat particles, well, they are completely invisible. There is just too much bright light in the field that we are viewing to see them. But let's say we took our bright field condenser and we put in a dark field stop. This is a small disc that stops the light from entering the center of the field you will note slits around the edges. When the condenser is in place with the dark field stop, the light comes in through the slits on the edge, and with the curvature of the bottom lens inside the condenser housing, the light is angled in from the side to highlight the specimen. When we look into our microscope now, we see our specimen against a completely dark field and the light is angling in from the sides. Suddenly, invisible particles become visible. This is the dark field view. When we use a bright field condenser in this manner to do a dark field job by utilizing a dark field stop, the image is not always as good as it could be if we were to use a condenser that is dedicated solely to the work of dark field viewing. Such condensers are available and we refer to them as dedicated dark field condensers. This is a dedicated dark field condenser and dark field is the only job it does and it does it quite well. In the first half of the 20th century, and earlier, if you wanted to do microscopic investigation of the full dynamics in a sample of something like living blood, a dark field condenser is what you used.